Hello and welcome to today's math class. Look at this challenge here. The question is 2 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x equal to 5 to the power of x. Yeah, we are not doing much work here. We just want to show that the only real solution or real root to this math challenge here is just 1. You know that if we put in 1 here, 2 to the power of 1 will give us 2, 3 to the power of 1 will give us 3, and 5 to the power of 1 will give us 5. And we know that 2 plus 3 will give us what? 5. So the only thing we want to do here is to show that 1 is the only um, real solution. Okay, the real root to this challenge is just 1. So how do we prove that? Now we take our solution here. Yeah, if you're new here, this is all I must TV. And if you've not subscribed, subscribe. And when you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever we drop an amazing video. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is to make the right-hand side of this equation to be unity. And how do we achieve that? We want to divide through by our 5 to the power of x. So we have here 2 to the power of x all over 5 to the power of x, right? Then plus our 3 to the power of x all over 5 to the power of x, then equal to our 5 to the power of x all over 5 to the power of x here. Yeah. So from here, you discover that here we give us 1, here we give us 1. And we can rewrite this expression here, right? Just applying the law of precedence that if you have your a to the power of, um, let's say, p all over b to the power of p, this is the same thing as your a all over b all raised to the power of p. This is a powerful law in indices, right? So we can rewrite everything we have here and here. So this is going to give us our 2 all over 5, right? All raised to the power of our x, then plus our 3 all over 5, all raised to the power of our x equal to our 1. All right. So at this point, what we want to do here now is easy. So we're going to say here, let, so here we say let our f of x, let our f of x be equal to our 2 all over 5 all raised to the power of x uh, plus our 3 all over 5 all raised to the power of x, then minus our 1. All right? Good. So with this, we want to find our f of x prime. In other words, we want to differentiate this function we have here. So if we differentiate this, this is going to give us our f of s prime will now be equal to. So differentiating this is going to give us our 2 all over our 5 all raised to the power of x, then ln of our 2 all over 5, right? Here. Then we differentiate this one. This also gives us 3 all over 5. Right, all raised to the power of x, then the ln of 2 all over 5. And if we differentiate this, this will give us 0, right? But it's a constant. Oh, sorry, yes, 3, please. Sorry, yes, 3, please. So, pardon. So, this, yes, 3, right? Good. Cool. So, from here, you discover that ln of 2 all over 5 and ln of 3 all over 5 are both negative. Remember? Yes. You know, you know, if you push this in your calculator, this is going to give you your ln of uh, 2 all over 5 is equal to your uh, minus 0 0.9162 blah 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 right and also if you consider your ln of your 3 all over 5 this will also give you negative which is minus uh, 0 0.5108 uh, da 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 dash right Good. And also, we know that your uh, 2 all over uh, 5 all raised to the power of x, uh, your 3 all over 5 raised to the power of x is greater than 0 for every value of x belonging, uh, belonging to uh, a real solution or a real number. Okay? We want to believe that, right? Good. Now, with this, it also means that our f prime. Of s uh, f of x prime is less than zero. So what does that shows? So from this expression so far, it also means okay. It also implies that our f of x 
the function f of s which is this is a strictly decreasing function right it's a strictly decreasing um, a decreasing function strictly decreasing function right so if it is a strictly decreasing function every strictly decreasing or increasing function has at most one real solution at most one real solution it cannot have more than one real solution so it also means that our x from this equation is equal to one so one is the only real root that satisfies the original equation and that is what we want to prove and that we have proven so thank you if you have any question with regards to this proof drop it in the comment section and if you are not clear with the explanation also drop a question in the comment section we're going to meet you there thank you for being there bye